Welcome to the easier way to sell presentation of Close the Deal Without Selling. Here's your host and developer of the easier way to sell, Ike Krieger. I want to welcome you to episode 55 of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast. It's been a labor of love. It remains a labor of love. And I hope you're getting as much out of it listening to the podcast as I am in preparing it and sharing it. I think you'll find this episode very interesting because of all things in the world, I'm going to compare sales training to dog training. And we'll get to that a little later in the program. But first, we'll continue on with going over the guidelines for the easier way to sell. And uh, for those of you who are listening for the first time or haven't been listening in a while, I'm going through the entire list of the easier way to sell guidelines one at a time. And uh, we're on number three now, and that's what we're going to start with today. So uh, welcome. And I got some information for you a little later in our episode. But for right now, let's get on to the guidelines. In our last few episodes of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast, we've been taking a closer look at each of the easier way to sell guidelines, which you can find on page 14 of the Close the Deal Without Selling Action Guide and Training Manual. And if you'd like a copy of the guidelines, please visit our website at closethedealwithoutselling.com and download the free preview of the Action Guide. This preview contains the entire list of guidelines. The easier way to sell guideline we're going to look at in this episode of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast is talk less and sell more. I'll repeat that for effect. Talk less, sell more. When you heard that, you probably nodded your head and said, yes, I get it. That's the way to sell most effectively. I need to talk less and I will sell more. To be honest, that wasn't what you were thinking of at all. I'd wager that when you heard me say, talk less and sell more, you probably said to yourself, I don't think so. That's impossible. You may have even heard yourself say, unless I tell my prospect everything about my product, my company, and my service, they won't know how big of an impact I can make on their lives. You may also be thinking, Why doesn't Ike just teach me how to get my prospect to sit there and listen to me as I educate them about the features and benefits of my product and why the purchase of my offering would be in their best interest? After all, the more information you provide, the greater the chance they'll buy, right? Wrong. You must give up the notion that to inform is to sell. Telling ain't selling. My students and consulting clients alike go nuts when I advise them to stop educating prospects. When you sell by educating a prospect, you're providing information that you or your company believes is important. However, the importance of that information has been so deemed through the filter called your point of view or your company's point of view. You don't have a clue as to whether this information alone will move your prospect in the direction of buying at all. Sometimes you give all your information and your prospect buys. Sometimes you give the same identical information and they don't. Information alone never sold anything. And if you're going to give information, it must be information delivered from the prospect's point of view rather than yours. Remember this. Unless it's part of your business strategy, you must never educate a prospect. You must only educate your clients. After all, clients are compensating you for your knowledge. Here's a shift in your sales assignment. Your job is to get information, not give it. How do you do that? Well, you ask questions and listen to the answers. 
We weren't trained to ask questions and listen. We were trained to sell by giving information using our long-standing ability to do show and tell. Stop doing show and tell. You already talk too much when you sell, and show and tell just makes things worse. Here's a saying I just love, and it's so applicable. In one day, Samson slew 10,000 Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Each day, 10 million sales are killed with the very same weapon. You talk too much when you sell. Now, before we go to the third step, let's review. First, you must remind yourself to give up the notion that to inform is to sell. Second, your job is to get information, not give it. And here's number three. You must learn to interview rather than present. What do effective interviewers do? Well, they ask questions and listen to the answers. Can you think of a profession based on asking questions any more impactful than a doctor? Well, the next easier way to sell guideline we'll examine is think like a doctor. But for now, I urge you to think about what a doctor does in your appointment. Doctors ask open-ended questions to better understand the reason for the visit. And your answers to those questions are the basis for the diagnosis and treatment protocols the doctor pursues. When you sell by informing, you miss this vital step. I'm delighted to tell you about the Close the Deal Club. This club is an opportunity for you to receive ongoing support as you learn the easier way to sell. Your membership in the Close the Deal Club provides you with regular Close the Deal Club sessions where you can share your successes, get answers to your questions, and practice the easier way to sell with your peers in a safe and welcoming environment. Second, you'll get access to my webinars and workshops, each valued at $100 or more at a price never to exceed $10. You'll also get your personal copy of the Close the Deal Without Selling Action Guide and Training Manual. The hundreds of pages in this digital digest will help you learn or teach the easier way to sell. You'll receive a license to teach the easier way to sell and you'll keep 100% of the revenue you generate for yourself. The only stipulation is all participants in your training program must be Close the Deal Club members also. And finally, you'll receive personal coaching by yours truly. Remember, for club members, I'm only an email away. Visit CloseTheDealWithoutSelling.com and join the club. At the time I'm recording this episode, my little pup Susie is turning six months old, and for anyone interested in getting a dog as a new family member, you have bushels full of considerations. Each of these considerations must be addressed before you make your decision to adopt. Now, the last time Jenny and I had a puppy of our own in the house was 35 years ago. I've forgotten more about dog training during that time than I ever knew before. But I pledged to Jennifer that I would do whatever was necessary to care for the new baby, and I believe I've accomplished this as well as anyone in their mid-70s can pull off. We wanted our new girl to be well-behaved. But my ability to train a new pup was one of my concerns. I had had good luck training my former dogs, all of whom, if I remember correctly, I missed desperately. Each of those dogs was house-trained and responded more or less to basic commands that any dog owner would hope for. But that was four decades ago. Now, you may be asking yourself, what do these memories of canine companionship have to do with the easier way to sell? Good question. I was pleasantly surprised to discover the answer to that question as I researched training your puppy. As I search through what is considered to be the new age counterpart to the ancient library at Alexandria, and of course I'm talking about YouTube, there were dozens of videos on dog training. 
I watched a couple of the videos and recognized training techniques from years gone by. The first video pushed the compassionate use of a choker chain, and this is what I remember from my past experiences. I used a choker chain when training my dogs, and I found the choker chain to be an effective training tool. But I never really liked the idea of tugging on a metal chain situated around the neck of one of my favorite beings in the world. And yet, there I was, causing my pup's discomfort when I activated the main function of the chain. At the time, I was under the impression that the main function of the choker was a reminder of the dominance I had in guiding the actions of this animal. This was the way I knew how to train a dog. On my third video, I found the teachings of a man named Zach George. Zach, as I discovered, is the number one dog trainer on YouTube. And Zach asks this question. Why does puppy training have to be discipline-oriented rather than one of authentic communication, relationship, and gentle reminders? Huh? Zach was telling me I could train Susie without using choker chains or discipline? How was that possible? Well, as I studied the videos and got a hold of the books written by Zach, a whole new world appeared, and this new world was strangely familiar to me. Zach advocated a conversational style of training that consistently resulted in an easier and happier approach to producing desired behavior. This method departed sharply from the old-fashioned I-am-your-master way to train a dog. And at the canine level, the method for training a dog championed by Zach mirrored my training program for human communication. The easier way to sell is a kinder and gentler approach to making things happen between people. Zach's training is the same, except it's designed for human to dog. I loved it. I saw it. I got it. Here was his premise. You can teach your dog to do something you want them to do because they want to do it for themselves and for you. Zach says the most fundamental step of his training procedure is to teach the dog from the inside out. Inside out learning means that you're teaching your dog to behave in a certain way, on their own, because your dog wants to behave that way for you. In the process, the desired behavior becomes part of muscle memory and habit. Outside-in training means you're making your dog behave in a certain way. How do you learn with the inside-out model? Well, Zach suggests primary training. It occurred to me when I heard the term primary training that I'd been using primary training as a teaching device for over 50 years, but I just never called it by that name. Primary training takes place in a controlled environment like a classroom where you're working on specific ideas and concepts. This is what I'm suggesting you do. I'm encouraging you to learn the easier way to sell from the inside out. Because when it comes to selling, you need to build new muscle memory. And I'm confident you can build this muscle memory through primary training. A good example of primary training in a safe space would be the Close the Deal Club or in a role play with colleagues who are also learning this system for selling. Secondary training is best found in the field. Surprise training may be an even better name for secondary training. Secondary training is unplanned, and you're being asked to think on the fly and adapt. Because in an actual sales situation, your first inclination will probably be to revert to your old habits like talking too much. This is where your practice pays off. Here's where you get to call on that muscle memory and your notes to remember the simple steps that make up the easier way to sell. Once in the appointment, I encourage you to stop thinking in terms of your training and think more of who you're being in the appointment and the fact that you're allowed to rely on your notes. Dogs can't do that, but you can. Who should you be? Be a problem-solving salesperson that's comfortable referring to your notes. 
These written reminders are an integral part of the system, and these notes will keep you on a comfortable path throughout your sales conversation. Should you be confronted with a situation that cries for you to revert to old habits or routines, take a moment, look at your easier way to sell note sheet, and return to the conversation by asking one of the powerful open-ended questions you've written down. It's easier than trying to remember what to say. Now, if you're utilizing what you practice in your primary training environment or in the Close the Deal Clubhouse meetings, you will undoubtedly have your note sheet in front of you. And on that note sheet is a list of questions that you compiled before the meeting even occurred. And believe me, your notes are a big part of what makes the easier way to sell easier. Back to Zach. Zach goes on to discuss that in order to take on this inside-out learning, you have three critical behavior modification techniques that you have to employ. The first one is how you manage this behavior modification. Management of environment, management of focus, management of distraction are all key to training a dog. Transferring this concept to sales effectiveness means using a managed environment to intentionally train at your current level of ability. Now, you may be great when you're sitting and reading the Close the Deal Without Selling Action Guide and you're repeating back to yourself the exact wording of the prelude or of the dozens of open-ended questions available throughout the guide. But how effectively you respond in a real-life selling situation may depend on your experience in a training session. Primary training sessions provide you with a controlled opportunity to follow the specific actions of the easier way to sell system. It's in these controlled sessions where you practice ending all of your unwanted behaviors. So if you're used to selling by telling, you need to be in an environment where you talking is followed by a gentle reminder to adjust that behavior. No punishment, no making you stop doing something. Instead, you get to practice avoiding unproductive behavior as you internalize this easier and more effective way to sell. You learn what is correct, and that's what you must practice. Second is desensitization. Most of your communications and behavioral issues, especially related to your anxiety and fear of sales, are a result of a perceived lack of control. This perceived lack of control might trigger a sensation of nervousness or even fright upon a communication with a new prospect. But when you practice the easier way to sell and then spend the effort to use the system with new prospects, you'll discover that only good things will come from using this easier way to sell. You'll soon realize, and your subconscious will soon realize, hey, this is okay. There's really nothing to be nervous or frightened about. When your goal is to have an authentic conversation with your prospect rather than an inauthentic sales call, you'll start to experience a happier way to sell. In other words, frequent, safe, planned exposure to things that cause you to become nervous or fearful should be part of your training. Most of all, for successful desensitization, you need to get out in the field and you need to use the system. Zach's third group is conditioning and counterconditioning. And when we talk about conditioning, and in this case, positive conditioning, it simply means having a more favorable connection with something. For example, before you go into a sales appointment and you feel your stomach start to seize up, recognize this as an unfavorable connection. And remember to pull out your notes and go over them, even while you're in the meeting. You get to say, I jotted down a few notes to help me stay organized. Uh, You don't mind if I refer to them during my conversation, do you? In this way, you become conditioned and your prospects become conditioned to the fact that it's okay to use your notes. That's just one way this system has your back. You just have to use the system. But as one of my clients said to me years ago, the only problem with Krieger training, which was the original name for the program, the only problem with Krieger training is that it only works when you use it. 
So what is my coaching? Use it. Remember to use your notes. And on page 306 of the Close the Deal Without Selling Action Guide and Training Manual, there's a copy of the note sheet format I suggest you use. Here's an example of counter conditioning. Let's say you have an old, unproductive response to a selling situation that you'd like to change. For instance, there's the feeling you get when you find yourself talking too much and the prospect just sits there and stares at you as you continue your monologue. This is a scenario to which we all can relate. However, if you go in as a problem solver with your notes and with the system, you'll experience the fact that you don't have to talk too much. Remember, your job is to get information, not give it. Now, you'll start to look forward to your sales calls because they'll be more productive. And emotionally, you'll really get something great out of your appointments. A dog might get a treat, but you'll experience your treat as you gain the trust and respect of your prospects. All the above takes into account the fact that you've been consistently practicing that's what it takes. Whether you're training a dog or you're transforming your own habits and behaviors, you must practice as diligently and consistently as you can. One thing Zach says, and I agree, is that you must keep your expectations realistic. No matter how well you understand this new principle of sales, it takes time to internalize the process and feel at ease in what were previously very uncomfortable settings. You may do marvelously when you work out in the Close the Deal clubhouse. However, the real world is not a controlled environment. So how effective will you be? How effective can you become? How prepared will you be when you have to deal with someone who throws you a sales curveball that you didn't go over in your controlled training environment? When confronted by real-life situations, you need to be able to recall instinctively aspects of your training that allow you to carry forward effectively and profitably. Wouldn't it be great if everyone learned to sell this way? Well, unfortunately, the sales training community is divided and disjointed. There's a massive amount of misinformation out there when it comes to advising people on how to learn or teach sales. And many hopeful salespeople are led to believe that you can learn how to sell in a couple of days or by listening to a couple of podcasts. Good news. The system is easy to learn, but new habits are not. I just finished a conversation with fellow sales consultant and well-known author, Alan Langer. You'll hear our complete conversation in an upcoming episode, but Alan told me a story of how early in his career, he was trained by a home improvement company for 10 days straight, and nine of those days were spent on product knowledge, only one on sales. Basically, Alan and the rest of those salespeople were armed to the teeth in information without really learning the best way to turn their contacts into contracts. Now, there are going to be times when you become frustrated and may actually find yourself taking a step backwards, but this is normal. However, you need to remain as patient and committed as possible. Progress is unlikely to occur when you're frustrated, so remember, patience is critical. Zach compares the training of a dog to teaching a child how to play baseball. Throughout the years of playing the sport, the child will probably have different coaches. Some he'll love, some not so much, but almost certainly the ones he loves are the ones who genuinely and patiently motivate him to do well. These coaches take the time to correct his swing. Instead of yelling at him when he drops a fly ball, the best coaches just encourage him to work harder at catching the next one. These coaches routinely practice with the kids and show them how to work through their difficulties. They acknowledge the players when they're on the right track. These types of kids are more likely to excel when they have this positive type of leadership rather than someone who yells and screams. It's not that the harsher approach is completely ineffective, but yelling won't likely be a contributing factor to furthering a passion for anything, including baseball, or the easier way to sell. In other words, keep the big picture in mind. 
Remember that success usually comes very slowly at first, but once you grasp new concepts, you must stay in a supportive environment and follow the advice you're given. So, here's my conclusion. If you're training a dog, use Zach George's system. If you're training yourself to sell, use my system. You know why? It's the easier way to sell. You'll love using this system in business and in your life, but you must practice the system. You must use the system. Do both, and you'll start seeing real progress. By the way, as Ike takes a sharp left turn, the best branding for a dog training company I've ever heard of was, wait for this, Sit Happens. Here's your takeaway tip. Use your notes. Woof woof. Okay, that'll do it for this episode. And I know you're sitting out there asking yourself, did I just say woof woof to me? Well, the answer is yes. And that was designed to help you remember to practice. Remember, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes the easier way to sell even easier. I'm going to invite you now to flip over to our YouTube channel at Close the Deal Without Selling and listen to my interview with former NFL lineman Marcus Ogden. Marcus talks about his transition from professional athlete to professional consultant and keynote speaker, and I think you'll find his conversation enlightening and, of course, very interesting. This is Ike Krieger. See you next time.